Hi, and welcome to this video tutorial where I'm going to show you how you can train Flux 1.1 LoRa on images of you, so you can then create images like this, 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 and this, because who didn't want to be a Jedi when they were a kid? Although this might seem like a bit of a gimmick, it can actually be extremely useful for your LinkedIn profile photos and particularly for your website content. Let's say you run a consultation website. This is a fantastic way to get professional grade images without having to take that professional grade photo shoot, which can be pretty expensive. Before we get started, if you don't know me, my name is Nico. I run an online community called the AI Ranking Hub. We have a free community and a premium community. The free is there to get you started if you wanna dip your toes in the water with all things AI powered search engine optimizations and automation, which is what the community also is all about. We teach you, we show you, and we support you to learn how to use all these the newest AI tools to maximize your search engine optimization, helping you rank number one on Google, and how to do that with AI-powered automations as well. It's a lot of fun. We have weekly meetings where you can catch up with us and ask us any questions. Most importantly, we have the classroom section where you have all the high quality tutorials and all the assets that we use as a community to help you rank number one on Google with the use of AI. If you want to be part of that really good growing community that's all about how to maximize your work with AI tools, I suggest you check that out. I'll leave links to both of those communities in the resources below. But today's video is about how to use Flux 1.1. If you don't know, Flux 1.1 Pro is created by Black Forest Labs and it is an open source model, meaning that it's technically free. You can download it into your device and run it without having to pay. However, there's an issue with that, that you need pretty significant hardware to be able to run it, and even the installation process can be a bit daunting for a lot of people. So what I prefer to do, and what this video is gonna be about, is using Flux 1.1 with a third-party platform called Fall.ai, which allows us to essentially rent their hardware to be able to use Flux 1.1 Pro and LoRa to be able to train a LoRa on our images. If you do want to try Flux 1.1 Pro completely for free, not train it on images of yourself, but use it for free nonetheless, I've done a, I've already done a previous video on how you can use the new version of Flux completely for free with Together AI, who kindly enough give you $5 credit to use as you see fit with the new image generation models, one of them being the new Flux 1.1 Pro. If you want to check that out, again, I'll leave it linked in the video description below. But let's start with fall.ai. With everything I talk about, it'll be linked in the description. So I want you to go to fall.ai and make an account. And for this, yes, you will need a bit of payment. So make sure you have your credit card handy. But to be able to train a LoRa and to generate enough images that will suffice whatever you need to do, you'll need at the most $6. And the good thing about fall.ai is that you pay as you go, you're not in a subscription model. So if you don't use it for one month, you don't pay for it that month. I really like that model. There's another thing that you're going to need, and that's about 20 to 30 images of yourself. And the good thing here is that they don't have to be perfect. At the risk of making an absolute fool of myself, I'm gonna show you the type of images that I used to train a Flux LoRa model that generated images like you saw in the beginning of this video. The images can look like this, 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 and all these images, yes, I had long hair, now I've got short hair, <laughs> and all these weird images that I've used, even me just of drinking wine, so on and so forth. And those images I did take on purpose for training the first Flux Laura. I think it's a good idea to have a range of images, full body, close-ups, and you get the idea. So they can be really anything. If you don't have those images, just get someone to take photos of you, but go through your camera roll and find 20 to 30 images of you because that's as much, that's how much you'll need. The next thing you wanna do is once you have all those images, you're going to select them all and you want to compress them all into one file. I'm using a Mac, so I'm right clicking and I'm going to compress that and that'll give you a little file. We're gonna use that file in a second. Within fall.ai, assuming you already have some credits, if you don't have that, you're gonna to go to billing when you sign in and you're going to buy some credits. I already have $9 uh, placed in. You can set a notification when you go below a certain amount so you can top it up again. But for this, 
for this tutorial, if you put $10 in, you're gonna have more than enough. You're probably gonna be able to train a lower on yourself and your friends and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So add some credits like you do and then go back to the explore tab up here. They've got here the new Flux 1.1 Pro is here and you're gonna to go to train a Flux LoRa. That zip file that you had, we're going to add in here. And yes, there are some documentation that tells you you need to also add text files with the same name with the trigger word, but I find that you don't need to do all that stuff. And if you just follow these steps that I'm gonna show you, it should be more than okay. What you wanna do is pick the zip file that you just generated that contains the 20 to 30 images, which you should have selected by now. You're going to upload that file and you're going to set a trigger word. This is perhaps the most important thing out of this whole tutorial. The trigger word needs to be very specific, niche, something that Flux is not gonna associate with anything else. What do I mean by this? Well, for example, if I would use the trigger word Nico, which is my first name, then the issue here is that Flux has been trained on millions of images some of which already have been associated with the word Nico, whether that's another person, a cafe, or whatever that is. So there's an association with that word, which sometimes makes the LoRa model not act like you want it to. So instead of using a normal trigger word, what you're going to do is do something extremely weird that is only gonna be, that is only gonna be able to reference the subject or the item in which we're training this. So in this instance, let's do, Something really weird like Iconic Co 32 percentage and dollar sign. The other setting that I find works best for me is in the additional settings, we're gonna click down and the steps, instead of 1000, I find that 2000 works really, really good. And as you see here, what does it mean by this and number of steps to train the LoRa? The more steps, the more the LoRa is trained. It doesn't specifically mean that if you go to 10,000 steps, it's going to be 10 times better, but I find that 2,000 steps tends to give me a really good result. This is gonna vary because the images that you provide your LoRa will be vastly different than the ones I provide my LoRa. So start with 2,000 as a good starting point. The next thing you're going to do is click start here. Once you do that, it'll start loading and up in the right hand side corner, you'll see a new model that'll start appearing and it'll say in progress. Here we go. In progress, we're training my new LoRa. And if I go see logs, I can see what it's training the images, what it's doing and it's training on all the images. It found the 31 images and then it'll start loading. This whole process will take roughly around five to 10 minutes, depending on how many images you've used. Additionally, depending on how many steps you've told it to do. Thankfully, we've already trained one, so we're not gonna wait. I'm gonna use a previously trained LoRa, but I've trained it with the exact same images that I just showed you. Once yours is completed, all that'll happen, it'll say completed in the latest one here, but I'm gonna use this one. And what I want you to do is go run interface. That'll take you to the interface, then now you can run your LoRa that's been trained on your images. You can see that it's already got the keyword or the trigger word in the input. So that's telling us that that's the, that's telling us it's great, this has really worked. Now we can prompt the LoRa with something else. And prompting is key here, as well as the additional settings. But let's go one step at a time and see if we can generate an image of me, a close up of me, maybe walking in a rainforest. Nice and easy, a close up of keyword, walking through a rainforest. I'm gonna leave the rest of the settings as it is, and then I'm gonna show you how they can affect the image output. I'm going to run, and when I do that, you see this animation style telling you that, hey, we're starting to work on your image. That was nice and quick. Perfect, so already for some reason, it's got me without my shirt, which, okay. Uh, and I guess that's to do with a part of the images that I took was me when I was cutting my hair and I didn't have a shirt on. So you got, have to be wary of that. Uh, but that actually doesn't look too bad. It's got my wonky nose, which is a good start. Let's add a little bit more into this. So let's say, add to that prompt, he's wearing a red jacket and he's, wearing, and he's walking through fog and see what we start getting here. Perfect, and now we start getting a bit of funky variations and that's all right. You need to test and you need to experiment with Flux LoRa. I have a surprise for you. I have a little treat for you that's going to make prompting a lot easier. And that is a custom GPT that has been given all the information and the best practices on what is the best way to prompt Flux. So what you're gonna do 
is put in a very simple prompt, make sure that the keyword or the trigger word is in there. For example, a close up photo of keyword or trigger word walking through the rainforest and I'm gonna hit enter. The custom GPT should understand that with the focus is the trigger word here and kind of already knows that here. Perfect, so I'm going to copy the first prompt and place that pretty much as it is within our prompt section here. I'm just going to delete the quotation marks because that might confuse the model a little bit. And now let's see what we got. While we're at it, I'm gonna make it a square image and hit run. A couple of things that you should note, it'll tell you that your request will cost 0.035 per megapixel for $1. You can run this model appropriately approximately 27 times. You can see that this has changed already the look and feel of the image quite a bit because the prompt was a lot bigger and a lot more detailed. I'm going to try the final prompt just to see what it comes out with. And then we are going to start working on the different parameters and see what they mean and the difference that they make. Okay, I've got a prompt here that I'm going to try out. Hopefully we get a diff hopefully we get some sort of image that we're looking after the way it shows my face, but it but it helps us kind of generate another image. Great, cool. I look really tired in that one, which isn't too far from the truth sometimes. So perfect. We'll stick with that one. Let's read through the prompt. Perfect. Okay, that's fine. The number of inferences steps is the number of steps you want this to perform before it gives you the image. More steps doesn't necessarily mean a better image. The maximum that you can place is 50. Let's change only that and see what the output we get. Perfect, that's a little bit better, but it doesn't look a little, it doesn't look too much like me. So now that we're going to start uh, experimenting with the other parameters. The guidance scale, this refers to how much you want the model to stick word by word to your prompt. And often you want to give it a little bit more flexibility. So I'm actually gonna put this all the way down to 3.5. And the scale of the LoRa Pass scale is how much you want your photos to impact or to be represented within the image itself. Again, you would think that, well, don't I wanna put that all the way up to four, the maximum? And again, it's not always the best way to get good results. This is all about experimenting. If you're wondering if you're using Flux, Flux Pro here, it's going to enable, you can't disable the safety checker, meaning you can't make not safe for work type images, which is probably for the best. Okay, perfect. Now I'm looking a little bit like Zlatan, <laughs> which is a little bit concerning, but okay. The image is actually looking a little bit better. It's looking real. I'm going to put up the scale a little bit more to 1.1 and 1 .1 and see what kind of output that we're getting. Again, this is all about experimenting because your images that you upload will be different to mine. You need to see what works better for you. But once you get the right components, then you're kind of off to the races. You can make a lot of images. Cool, this one here again. <laughs> Let's change the number of steps down to 28 so I can show you that maybe that'll be the trick. Now we're getting something a little bit more realistic. I am always shocked at how good it gets my nose, which usually AI tries to kind of fix it. I've got a bit of a wonky nose, but it understands that I shouldn't really fix this man's nose. Getting nice and close. Really now it's all about prompting. I'm going to try and get uh, a different prompt here. There we go. That actually kind of looks like me. I would probably very much, my mother would probably very much mistake myself in this image. She would ask me when the, when did I manage to get to the desert. I'm gonna try this again, 28, just to experiment a little bit with the number of inferences steps. I've also changed the image landscape because if I get a good image uh, that we can use for the thumbnail, then that'll be two birds with one stone. You can also see previous requests that you've done. If you're in your LoRa that you've trained and you click the request button here, they've done a really good they've done a really good thing here and you can see the thumbnails of the previous images that you've generated with that LoRa. So if I really liked some of the previous images, I think for example, this one was my favorite and that's the one that I might use for the thumbnail. I can see everything that I used within that image to generate that. So I can see the prompt and I can see the actual additional settings. So for this, for example, the number of inferences steps, I use 28. 
the weight, I use 1.1 and the guidance scale 3.5. So if I use that same thing again, I might get similar results. So I'm just gonna do three images here and run it. And again, it's all about experimentation. Perfect, now I've got three and one and they're not too bad actually. Uh, so all three of them are pretty good. We've set the setting to all be square. Uh, but they're all looking pretty good because we found the settings that work best with the images that we provided. I'm gonna do one more and I'm gonna do four just to max it out a little bit. But you can see here, the more I put the photo, the images up, the more it's going to cost me as well. I'm gonna run this one more time and then we'll finish the video here. Again, the idea is experimentation, try it out, but you're not gonna use more than $5. I've just been using way too many LoRa's for way too many examples and projects that we're working on with our uh, with our community. Here's a great example of some of, here's a great example of some that turned out really good. I'm gonna go this one and this one, and these are probably my favorite. That one here didn't quite get my forehead correctly. That one is pretty spot on except for my wonky eyes, but maybe that's natural. Maybe I've got a wonky eye. Anyway, that's enough for now. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please give me a little subscribe and a like. I would really appreciate it. And again, if you want to join a community with like-minded people who will help you and guide you through your learning journey on all AI tools and SEO related stuff, check out our community. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.